All right, so just quickly in this video, I'm gonna go over the try questions from the video you guys watched. Number one was quite simple. We just needed to use Pythagoras' theorem and figure out which one of these was the longest side. So the 28 was the longest, so that's why I had to put 28 for C. And then you just did 21 squared plus 20 squared, and then you get that 400, sorry, 841 is equal to 784, which is not true, so therefore it is not a right angled triangle. Moving on to number two, Again, the same thing, we needed to figure out which one of these was the longest side. The longest one we have here is 1.25, so that's why that one is my C. So then I get 1 plus 0 0.5625 is equal to 1.5625. Both sides of the equation are equal, so therefore it is right angled triangle. Now, let's go over number three, because this one might have been the one that caused the most problems. So for number three, um, we're going to find out if the points make a right angled triangle. So for the third one, I gave you guys the graph in front of you so you could use as a visual. So what I'm going to do first is plot those points onto the graph. So here is D, and then E is at negative 2 and 3, which is right here. And then F is 1 and 0, so 1 and 0 is right here. So now I've got my three points. I can figure out the distance between each of them and I'll label this one with E and this one is F. So now the nice part is, is that this right here is an easy distance to find. How many units are those away from each other? And they are five units away, so this is five. Now to figure out, let's say E to F, we have to make this triangle here. Let's just zoom in for you guys. And then we get this right angle here. So how long is each side? Like this is three and this is three. So to figure out how long this side is, we need to do Pythagoras, right? So then I've got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I've got three squared plus three squared is equal to c squared. And I've got nine plus nine is equal to c squared. So c squared is equal to 18. So that means that c is equal to the root of 18. 18 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to leave it as the root of 18. So this is the root of 18. Now, moving on to the other side, so let's choose a different color. Let's go with green. So then, same thing, make this little triangle. This is the right angle. Here's 2. This is 3. So then we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I've got 3 squared plus 2 squared is equal to c squared. 9 plus 4 is equal to c squared and 9 and 4 give me 13, so 13 is equal to c squared, so the root of 13 is equal to c. So now this section here is equal to the root of 13. So now we have all the sides of our triangle, and we can use Pythagoras' theorem for the last time to figure out if this is right angled or not using these three sides, this one, this one, and this one. So now again, I've got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and I've got the root of 13 squared plus the root, sorry, the root of 18 squared is equal to 5 squared. 5 is the longest side because the square, to get 5, it would be the square root of 25, so 25 would be the biggest number. So I get 13 plus 18 is equal to 25, and 3 and 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, carry the 1, so I get 31 is equal to 25, which is not true, so therefore it's not right angled. Okay, so now moving on to number 4. Number 4, we did this without a graph in front of us, so now we're just going to have to do that visualization of where um, each point might be. So. I'm going to start with J. J is at 4, 1, so I'll make this point here my J. So this is J, and this is at 4 and 1. Now my K is at 1 and negative 3. That means it's going to be more to the left and a little bit more down. So let's just go right here. So here's my K, and this is 1 and negative 3. And then finally, L is going to be at negative 3 and 0, so it's going to get more to the left. and between my points J and K. So let's go like right here. And this is going to be my L. And what I'm gonna do actually is, I think I have to move around my K, move my K maybe here. So that, and then I have my L, which is negative three 
and zero. So now I've got my three points drawn. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna draw my triangle. Okay, there we go. So now I have to figure out what is the vertical and horizontal distance between each of my points. So to figure out this distance here, I have to look at my x value. So I've got one and four. The difference between one and four is three. So this is three. Then to figure out this distance here, I need to do the distance between one and negative three. How far away are those numbers from each other? Well, three, negative three needs three to get to zero and one needs one to get to zero. So we can add these two numbers, three plus one is four. So the distance between them is four spaces. So now I can do Pythagoras. Again, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We've got three squared plus four squared is equal to c squared. Nine plus 16 is equal to c squared. 25 is equal to c squared. And this one's a perfect square. So we know that c is five. So now this one here is five. Okay, and then for j, again, I'll use a different color. So I'll make my little triangle for j to l. Okay. And here it is. Now I want to figure out how long is this distance here. Again, it's the horizontal distance, so that means I'm looking at my x coordinates. So the distance between negative 3 and 4 um, is going to be 7. And then for my vertical distance, I've got a y coordinate of 0 and a y coordinate of 1. That, those two are 1 away from each other, so I get 1. So now for this triangle, let's bring this out this way. I've got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I have seven squared plus one squared is equal to c squared. 49 plus one is equal to c squared. 50 is equal to c squared. Taking the square root of both sides, I get the square root of 50. And I can leave it like that. So square root of 50. Now for the last one, here we go. Another right angle triangle in here. And then this distance from here to here, well, it's the distance from negative three to one. They are four spaces away, so this is a four. And then from this distance, the vertical distance, what's the distance between zero and negative three? Well, that's three spaces. So here is a three. And notice, this is kind of nice actually, that this triangle has three and four for the legs and so does this triangle, three and four. So you kind of save ourselves some work because the distance that these ones had was five, so this one will also have five. So this one here is five. So now we have our three sides. We have the root of 50, we've got five and five. So which one is the longest? Well, we know that five would be the root of 25, right? So the one that is the biggest is the 50. So then I've got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And I've got the root of, or just put five, sorry, five squared plus five squared is equal to the root of 50 squared. So then I get 25 plus 25 is equal to 50. And I get 50 is equal to 50. So therefore we're happy and it's right angled. Okay, now those were the four try questions from this video. Hopefully that cleared some things up and I left this calculator here and I actually didn't need it for anything. So let's get rid of that. So there you go. Hopefully that helps clear things up.